welcome, to, welcome back to the Crossover Talk Show. I'm your host, Travis Garrison, where we're talking sports and life. Have a great guest with us today, very special guest with us today that's given us great knowledge, Mr. Douglas Teranika. This is part two, talking about Peace is the Mission Productions. We left off talking about some of your great company company values. Can you tell us a little bit more about, more about your company values? Definitely, definitely. Thank you. Um, so just a quick recap. The first company value is Tino Sarudza, which means we decide because we always have a choice. The second value is um, Umoya, which is your energy. That's your light, you know, fueled by positivity and truth. The third value is Kurota, which means to dream. So you should always have a dream. Um, it's making sure that you're dreaming big. That dream should scare you, right? Uh, when you're thinking about dreams, dreams are something that even when you look at your past self, could you ever have imagined yourself where you are today? Even if it was a year ago, three years ago, five years ago. So they now realize like, oh, I don't know what the future may hold, right? So nothing is impossible. So now when I'm dreaming, it's dreaming big. But when you're dreaming, it's also what's the intent of that dream? Is it a dream that leads to helping people, taking care of people, helping yourself? That way you're in a better, healthier position. That's also a big thing, right? Because then the people you love and care for are also well taken care of. Um, with the company values and with a lot of the lessons, we like to travel kind of through the paths, through the path of time. So looking at the past, the present, and the future. So you were mentioning before, you know, when you're looking at the past, remembering when you were younger, when you used to play sports, things that brought you joy. So it's like, do we look to the past for lessons? Are we able to look at the past for lessons? When we look to the future, are we looking at the future for hope and inspiration and that faith, right? Because you're dreaming for something bigger, something different from where you are now. Um, so that's the third value, which is kurota, to dream. And I think that's huge. And when I talk to kids or my kids or, you know, anybody about dreaming, dream big. Mm -hmm. like, like, why dream small? You know, I, I, I believe that, you know, for me, for me, is that, you know, I don't, I learned not to put God, not to limit what God can do. Definitely. Because he's shown me just within this past year of what he can do by just, if it's just limitless. And I just kind of like let him do his thing. That's you know? so, so true. So it's, mm -hmm. it's like, um, for me, like you said, your dreams should scare you. Like your dreams should scare you because it's something like, it should be something that others think is very, is impossible. Because when it happens, they know God was the one that, that allowed that it to happen it. and it mm -hmm. happened. So that's how I am and I think dreaming is, 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 is huge and I think it's key and I think, I, but I think a lot of people are scared to go after their dreams. Definitely. They, they're scared to chase that dream because of, like we talked about before in regards to what other people may think or what people may say or how it's going to make them look and all these other things that don't even matter. So they basically hold themselves back of what God has for them because they're worried about what other people that don't even matter think about that. Definitely true. And I think, like I say, like dreaming is, is, is huge. I love the dream. I love the endless possibilities because if you stick into the norm, then what is, for me, it's like it's not even, like what's, so, what's not cool about that, but like what's, like you, you know what to expect. Right. When you dream big and you kind of like let God lead you, it's like you never know what's going to happen. And He'll take you, like you said, take you places that you. I never be. I never thought I'd be doing some of the things I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. But because mm -hmm. I took the hand, my hands off the situation, allowed God to lead me and to dream big, like dream of endless possibilities. It opens up so many other doors. Absolutely. No, Absolutely. definitely. And I think another part, too, of it is, for me at least, it's also letting go of the dreams. Dreams don't have to be so specific to how I may have envisioned something. Right. And then it's also trusting God that He knows better than me what I may want, too, Absolutely. you know? And something that my mom, this is also my test of faith, something that I'm also working through, right? So growing up, my mom always used to say, you know, like when you look at the birds, specifically, like when you look at the birds, they don't worry about what food they're going to eat tomorrow or next week or the following right. week. They just focus on the day. Right. Look at how birds fly. The whole world is theirs, Absolutely. you know? So for me, it's kind of trying to have that same balance of not just being ignorant and not focusing on the future and planning things, but also trusting in God that the future will take care of itself, but let me focus on today and take those few steps. So the fourth value is kubo, which means to charge. So to charge means, you know, charge towards those dreams. So if, let's say, looking at my production company, my dream is so big, but if I'm just so focused on it has to happen right now, 
I end up being disappointed because it's not going to happen overnight Absolutely. or in one week or in a, it's going to take weeks, months, years, right. right? But when you slow down and look at those steps, you realize like, oh, I'm enjoying the journey aspect Absolutely. of it. I'm enjoying the people that I'm meeting. These things are adding into the scripts that I'm writing. Right. All these things are kind of connecting. So for me, that's also an important part is realizing that charge, creating a plan. You know, with certain dreams, it could be going to school for those four years, focusing on that degree, getting that degree, and then doing X, Y, Z. It could be going to get this certificate and then following this. Like, there's so many different angles and ways, and I think that's a beautiful thing about the time and age that we live in now, right? Um, when you look at athletes, before we were talking about it, where you would have to get a VHS recorder, record it on a VHS tape, dub it, do this, do all these different things, and then mail that out to different schools, then you wait on your house phone to get a call. Right. And then things change now where athletes are creating their own videos where you can go on YouTube, you watch videos that they're their own highlights. Yeah. Then now, so it's all these different ways of getting to that end goal. Right. And I think that's the beautiful thing about life is, you know, we were raised, a lot of us, in thinking, okay, this is the path, you take this path, you follow this route, that's how you get here and you get there. But when you actually break things down, you can be like, oh no. There's so many different ways to get to that destination, and the journey is so important because um, some of that I love is like uh, Maya Angelou, and she talks about being rainbows in people's lives. So sometimes a five second interaction in somebody's life can do so much for that person and just sends them down that perfect path that now that person ends up helping 30 people, one of those 30, and she just talks about those rainbows, being rainbows in people's lives. And when you think about us, that person that you meet in the grocery store, that person that you're driving next, all these different people are people on your journey and on your path. So you never know how those people can add, interact, and do all these different things. But what you do know is how you can affect those people's lives, right. you know? No, absolutely, and taking charge, like you said, and basically not putting yourself on a timetable. Mm -hmm. Somebody once told me when I was on a special journey was that it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Mm -hmm. And I... As I, as I go through my years and my experiences, I didn't understand certain things that certain people told me until years later. And now looking back on it, I met so many different people and people and, and I went through so many different experiences through the, through the journey that basically shaped me to basically, it's like a shaping type of thing. Like it's Definitely. Like a pottery that like is putting you together, it. molding mm -hmm. you to where you're going. But a lot of people want to skip that in between part and go from start to finish immediately. Definitely. So they miss they, so they missing everything in between. Definitely. And that's definitely. the that's the key part because if you just go from start to finish, you get there, you can ruin everything. hundred percent. Because you didn't go through that whole molding process. Definitely. So that's uh, when people it's, I talk to people people want certain things. They want these big things. They want to go to these big dreams and goals. But they don't want to go through the process. They don't want to go through that part. So they want it the easy way. But mm -hmm. they don't understand that you have to go through all the steps A, B, C. And there's value in it, right. You, 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 you can't, <laughs> you can yeah. think you can go through the, my, 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 one of my friends once told me the microwave process. Mm. Like, what, what do you rather have, the it's food in the microwave or food in the oven? Yes, it's going to take longer if it's in the oven. Microwave, I can heat it up in a minute, 30 right. seconds. Is it going to taste the same, though? But if you put it in the oven, it's going to take part of an hour. The same food. <laughs> you put it in the oven, it's going to take like an hour and a half. But you're hungry, you want it right now. But you wait, it's going to taste that much better. Exactly. So it's, it's that thing where I teach people, I tell people, even myself, I have to go through it in regards to got to go through the process. The process is not easy. And we're in that instant <laughs> gratification world, you right. know, and it's the same thing when you tie it to social media. It's like you post something, you want to see that immediate reaction, <laughs> right. you know, you post video. But it's like, no, a lot of things in life take time, Absolutely. you know, and even with the values of to dream and the steps, when you look at the universe and when you look at our world, even like this office, so everything in our world was either created by the universe, so it needed time, or it was created by people, so it needed steps and dedication, right? When you look at this, just this room, when you look at the mics, these mics were created by somebody's mind. They, somebody thought of this mic, they thought of the cable, the desk, the chairs, but then it was also the notion of actually doing something that then created it. And that's what our world, that's what it takes to live in our world. Absolutely. You know, you either can experience and enjoy the things that come naturally, but once you start dreaming, then you have to put that work in there and give it time, right. you know, give it time. And that's, that's a big thing. Um, I know I personally even struggled with that when I first started writing. And when I look at my journey now, I'm grateful for just how things have just broken out into there. Like from writing my first book and having that 
me believing like, oh, this is done, this is complete, I love it. And this is probably in 2018. And in my mind, it's okay, the next thing that I want is this, 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 and then you plan the whole thing. But then when you start to not get things the way you want it, but then you find that, oh, but this connected me to this person. Right. And I learned this, and this helps me see it like this. Right. And then also seeing how now the story itself has grown so much over time. Absolutely. I'm like, oh, I've done things and I've added things that I never would have had if I got things my way the first time. Right. So then being like, oh, thank you for not having things go my way. Right. I'm grateful for how things are you know, progressing. Absolutely. And with that connection, the last value is UNESU, which means you have us. So with that value of, you know, realizing the power of your decision to know Sarudza, we decide, your energy, your light, your dreams, charge towards those dreams. As you're charging towards those dreams, a lot of times it may seem like you're alone, that you're, you're not finding that help or support. But if you're really honest with yourself, you find that life, the universe is working in our favor. You find that one person that, like my illustrator that does a lot of my artwork, he's an illustrator that lives in Bolivia. So me, my journey connecting with him was a journey in itself, but now it helps me appreciate so much more of the work that I have. I probably went through like three or four different editors before I found CQ. And in our relationship, I appreciated that so much more because of the bad experiences I had before. You know, with me going into the world of producing, it's because I met a lady by the name of Kate Subata that was an indie filmmaker. So me seeing her capable of making her own films, I'm like, oh, why can't I do this, right. you know? But it's all these things that if those things didn't happen in those moments with other people, right. I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Right. So that value of UNESCO, you're not alone, you have us, it means that as long as you're working on your dream with positivity and positive intent, the universe is in your favor, you will find your herd, you will find your village, your group of people that will help you. Um, and I constantly find that um, with just the team and how people are growing through with it. No, absolutely, absolutely, and I think I think that's great. And like you said, I'm just like, but people have to understand that people have to understand that it's the process. They have to go through these things because, like you said, you had to go through all those bad experiences to find this good experience. Definitely, you had to go through all this to find that. So, but that's what people will miss if they want to the microwave success. If they want to go from start to finish and miss everything in between, they mm -hmm. will miss all those lessons and you know things that strengthen you and make you smarter and. and you more knowledge and connect you to all the right people they're going to miss that part and I, like i said i tell people all the time trust the process trust the process trust the process definitely trust the, gotta trust the process so those are definitely some great company values to have and um that's that's awesome Thank you. No, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And like I was mentioning before, with the company values, they tie into the project, like with the book series. So with the first book, it's called Peace is the Mission. And essentially, it follows these two star-crossed lovers. So you have a general of the Vulcan army. So that's the, the Voleno, the people of fire. So he's the general that's leading those people. Who He falls for a princess who's from the Kal side. So it kind of starts off with that romantic aspect. But these are star-crossed lovers, so they can't be together because they're tribes, they're kingdoms, they're enemy people. Right. So a, a series of events lead up that they have to run away from where they are. Right. So as they run off into this world that they don't know, it's this faith, it's this hope that they're taken in by going into this unknown universe. Right. That's where they come across the third group of people. Now, this third group of people educate them so much on what's actually going on in the world, that their little kingdoms are actually parts of bigger wars that are happening. This tribe of people that, are, that have these different abilities it, they're more connected to the universe, so they teach them more about the world and the earth and what's going on with that. So it kind of re-engages them. Right. So these two, the general and the princess, realize the power in their decisions. They were told that, oh, as a general, this is your path. As a princess, this is your path. Right. But now they're realizing that, oh, no, we can change things. And our changing can help impact the world around us and what's going on with that. So that's how, now, that's how the book starts, and that's the introduction into the world. Wow. Mm -hmm. that's, that's amazing. And like you said, it can... And who, what's the genre of course? It's an Afrocentric fantasy, so gotcha. you're looking at young adults, so ages like 12 to like 18, 19. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. That's, that's amazing, man. It sounds very interesting. Thank I'm, you. <laughs> I definitely would love to check it out. And like you said, because the connections and, and, and how you utilize um, these different things and individuals to basically make people think differently. And it's, right. It's like, and that's, and when, you, when you're talking about producing and writing and, and drawing, it, and you're basically taking people somewhere else at least like you said like it was a fantasy definitely or something mm -hmm. to make them think or see things outside the box in the right outside of their box outside their box definitely. exactly definitely. so and i think that's that's very interesting i'm i'm always intrigued to talk to people who are 
dreamers or think big or who wants to produce and create things. Because like you said, it's not easy. Right. The process is not easy. Coming up with these things is not easy, but you're doing that. You're basically living outside a box. You're basically going after something that you believe in and that you're trying to pursue. No, oh, thank you, thank you. Yes, I appreciate that. And with the, the second book, it's Pieces of the Mission, Relinquish Our Chains. And like I mentioned before, it, they follow the same storyline, but it's other two different characters' point of views. And with the title, Relinquish Our Chains, this is more of a journey into the people's past as they're talking about the present and the future that they're fighting for. But Relinquish Our Chains, essentially it's talking about how us as individuals too, sometimes we hold on to things in our past that are holding us back from a better present and a better future. So that kind of ties into their journey and then the story as it's progressing through it as well. Absolutely, and, and, and we kind of spoke about it a little bit before um, the show in the sense of your past mm -hmm. and how your past can hold you back from your future. Or your present, definitely. Because, like you said, it could be past trauma, it could be past poor choices or mistakes, and but you you constantly always thinking about that, and so it's it's like you said, it's holding you back from moving forward. Exactly. And and, and it can hold you back from moving forward with things you want to pursue. It can hold you back from things that God has for you because you're so worried about what happened back there, though. And it's in the past where nobody else can touch it, <laughs> do anything, nothing, you know. Right. And it's one of those things where, yeah, like you know, when you look at the past, it's. For me, I personally, I want to look at a past that I'm always willing to learn from. So as long as you're always willing to learn from something, now in the present, it opens up the door for making mistakes. So you're right. Something that held me back a lot was that fear of failure, failure, fail, fear of looking like a fool in front of other people, X, Y, Z. But when you really look at your journey as a person, you're like, okay, learning how to walk. I had to crawl for how long? You know, and even with crawling, I fell so many times. I was trying to speak at the same time. Also, all these other things. But it took me a while of falling down and getting up, falling down and getting up. Whereas now, after let's say we finish high school, college, and we have whatever education, we have this assumption that we shouldn't fail. Whatever you do, you need to succeed in. When in reality, it's like no, give yourself a little more leeway. Be excited to fail, so you find those lessons. So next time, it's a little bit easier. So for me, that's something that I'm trying to work into myself: is that excitement of failure, that excitement of being like, oh, I see what I did wrong there. Next time, I can do it like X, Y, Z, and then working it through that way. So that's kind of the goal with it. You know, with that second book, it's learn learning to look at your past with forgiveness and kindness, so you can look at your present self the same. And work on that future goal more. Right, and like like you said, you know, I know a lot of people, or I heard stories of individuals that stuck in their past and they can't move forward. Whether it's in relationships, mm -hmm. whether it's in mm -hmm. jobs, whether it's in you know whatever it is, you know, because they stuck on something that hurt them, or the hurt that they caused, or um, the mistakes that they made. But it's like you said, we can't do anything about that, and that's something I even preach to myself today. In the sense of you can take those, you can learn, take those exactly. lessons with you. Leave everything, leave everything else behind. Take those lessons with you. Don't say, don't make those same mistakes move forward, and help somebody else move forward by basically sharing your experience, your story with them, or sharing sharing how um, those past mistakes may have messed up your future in a sense. So that's that's definitely key for sure. Definitely, and I think the other um, the ability to take other people's seasons as lessons. You know, so it's. I love learning from other people. I'd be watching the interviews, people talking about their journey. So not just where they are now in that glory. It's you no. Know, what was that journey like? Where were the failures? Where were the successes? There's usually more failures than successes. Absolutely. And then really seeing that, and it's more humbling because then you have a little more leeway on yourself to fail as well too. Absolutely. And I know you said you had a five book series. So what's your real four? Your fourth book. Yeah, so, with the, so I have the first two books published, right. and now with the third and the fourth book, it's working through those currently. Gotcha. I also have the animation and scripts that I write. Okay. So for me, that's also part of my journey with life, is it's finding that balance of writing. You know, a part of me wants to finish all five here and there and right, put them out, right. but then now when I look at it, I'm like, no, I enjoy taking that time because the journey that I'm going on in my personal life is adding into that journey for the books. So the third and the fourth will probably be coming out in the next year or so, okay. and then while I'm working on my production with other films, and animations too. Right. Did you ever have times when you got stuck in writing? Because I know for me, I think faster than I can write. Mm. <laughs> so like my brain is always going, and I'm trying to write until my I'm trying to so my my writing looks sloppy. You know. I, I always so I use ninety percent I type. Okay. As okay. far as like I feel like with notes with handwriting that helps if I'm trying to memorize something. Right. But as far as with the writing aspect, I don't like handwriting and then going back to typing. Right. I might put notes in my phone, so I'll end up having like pages of notes and I'll transfer that to Word. Um, 
But yeah, I, I can see that as far as sometimes you also realize how you think when you end up writing. Because you realize sometimes how you can jump from different mindsets or different right. things in there. Uh, but it's a great way to get to know yourself as well, right. um, you know, through a writing journey. Absolutely. So a lot of times the books that I wrote, I had to literally like voice record them. <clears throat> because I, that's the only way I can really get it out in the sense of, you know, telling a story or, you know, I want the effect to come across where you can hear where there's pain, where there's mm. happiness or laughter. So I want people to feel that expression through the words in a sense. Got you. No, it makes perfect sense. Make perfect sense. And for me, it's also that beauty now of as I now as a reader and I read also when I watch things, you pay more attention to how people are speaking, how mm -hmm. they are wording things. Because now you have that appreciation for when you were trying to figure out how to come across that way. Um, when you read, for me, like reading books that I like the second time, you appreciate that author more because now you know that journey of being an author. Absolutely. So how can how can people find out more about Mr. Douglas Terinas? Thank you. No, so you can find out more on P, uh, pitmproductions.com. Um, if you search on YouTube, you can search PITM Productions or Pieces of the Mission Productions. Also on social media, uh, PITM Productions too. Right. Absolutely. I definitely appreciate you coming and, and sharing your knowledge. You know, I've learned something. I'm interested in reading your books and everything that you have going on because I think that the way you think and your mindset is key, and I think more people can learn from the Thank lessons you. that you're trying to teach and even what your company is about. So I definitely appreciate you coming on to the Crossover Talk Show, talking to me, spending some time with me. And I definitely appreciate you guys joining us at home. You know, if you want to be a guest on the show, you have an organization or company, you want to be a part of the show, you want to come on here, you can go to www.thecrossovertalkshow.com. Also, if you know a student athlete or want to highlight a student athlete, you can also go to the, the crossovertalkshow.com. Like I always, I definitely appreciate you guys' support, your love. Always remember to think first, make the right choice. Don't think about how your reaction can affect right now, but think about how it can affect your future and how it can affect those around you. As always, I definitely appreciate you guys joining us today and tuning in. Be sure to stay tuned for the next show. Thank you. Thank you. Make the right choice. But think first. In this thing called life, we take so many gambles. Some are good ones, and others are not. We have dreams and goals. Some of them require us to work our butts off and believe like never before in order for our dreams or goals to happen. Some dreams or goals require us to sacrifice or take a leap of faith, not knowing the outcome. Taking a gamble can be a scary thing. I took so many gambles in my life. Some I won, and some I lost. I wasn't just gambling with money. I gambled with my family, my career, my freedom, and reputation. The question is, Yeah, well, we're not going to go in May, but then, then you were like, we don't know this.